Well, we have a, a comet shower coming through tonight, uh, which to me means shooting stars, and I'm going to be heading off out to try and photograph a shooting star. Uh, I have learned in the past that uh, you need a lot of patience and uh, some resilience to be able to photograph a shoot, shooting star, unless you're exceptionally lucky, um, because uh, I've spent a number of nights out over the years and uh, so far I've only managed to photograph one <laughs> but uh, it's better than none right um, now there's a number of things that I have learned that I need to do before I even go um, off to my um, to my chosen venue and that is I like to set up my camera before I go difficult to do in the dark and I'm all organized and warm here so uh, here we go and the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I set everything to manual, uh, including the focus. And then with the focus, I will be setting it to infinity. Um, I shall show you where that is on the lens. If you're not sure where infinity is on your lens, the best way to find out is to take your camera and that particular lens out during the daytime and then focus on a distant point and take note, uh, mental note of the setting and that will be infinity and if you set that on for shooting stars you won't go far wrong. Uh, also I want uh, the camera itself to be on manual and I like to have a long exposure and it will be somewhere between 30 and 50 seconds depending on how dark it is and uh, if there's any moon or not um, which will make a big difference in the uh, the time that I expose for. I want to use the widest angle lens that I've got and uh, I'm using this one which is a 11 to 24 and it's a monster, believe me. It's a monster of a lens, but boy, is it good. And then I want it on its fastest setting, which in this case is f4 with this particular lens. And I'll be using it at its widest angle. Um, then I'll set the camera up uh, in the tripod and uh, point it in my chosen direction which for me will be north um, there is a reason for that which we'll come on to and then I'll press the intervalometer and start off the camera but before I run into my sequence I'll want to do a number of test shots and that gives me the opportunity to tweak my settings if I need to do so so I'll take a number of test shots and when I'm happy that uh, I have the settings that I want and it's being exposed well, then uh, off we go. And I'll expose one after the other until my battery runs out. And if the conditions are still good, I do have a spare battery so I'll take the old one out and put a new one in and continue on. So at the end of the session, I do have quite a lot of photographs and hopefully at least one of them will have a shooting star run. If not, then I do get second prize, uh, which is the reason why I point my camera to north, because shooting stars can appear anywhere in the sky, and why not north? Um, so if I don't get a shooting star, I get second prize. That means that I can stack and blend the photographs which I have taken and get myself a beautiful star trail, which I quite like anyway, but I'd rather have a shooty star. Now, there is a number of other things that I will uh, take with me. <coughs> and here we go. Um, the first one is, obviously, we've got to have one of these guys, a good steady st tripod and uh, set your camera up on that, uh, which is number one. The next thing that I want to take is a torch. 
um, so I can see what I'm doing before I uh, start off my sequence and uh, then uh, making sure that I've got a warm jacket with me and a warm hat and maybe even gloves too if it's that cold uh, last but not least I want to take one of these and what this is for is to wrap around your lens and it eliminates fog condensation that you'll get on your lens and completely spoil your shoot and frustrate your night. Uh, now what happens with that is that plugs into here which is the dew controller which in turn plugs in to here 12 volt battery and that keeps your lens warm and should prevent any mist from forming on your lens and ruining your shoe. So uh, I find that essential. Then <coughs> I want to choose my venue uh, quite carefully and I do think about this sometime before. I'm lucky that I do live in the countryside so uh, we do have dark skies when there's no moon and still quite dark when there is a moon. Some people might want to take uh, cityscapes with hopefully a shooting star going over the top or anything really but and that will mean that you'll have to adjust your exposure uh, accordingly uh, and like I say it's well worth taking a number of test shots first and the figures which I'm giving you are just those of which I use and only a guide so if you're doing this for the very first time then uh, it's something to start with and then you can work from there and the key to it is taking those test shots. Um, now, apart from that, uh, it's the first day of 2017 today. So it's the first of the first 2017. So this could start my year off really well. Or a little bit disappointing. But I have been disappointed before. And I'll bounce back and the next time we have a comet shower then I'll be back out there again now if you do want any information then when we're likely to get shooting stars there is a number of websites that you can go to and you can find out this information good luck well here's my camera settings um, I'm in bulb because I have an exposure of um, 50 seconds so um, uh, I need to be in bold mode uh, the reason why my exposure is so long which means I can keep my ISO fairly low I will adjust that accordingly if I need to um, no plus or minus auto white balance and manual focus and I've uh, general and last but not least there's the um, focus mark on uh, a Canon lens now that will be different on all kinds of lenses so like I said it's worth taking your camera and the lens you're going to use outside focusing on a distant point during the day making a mental note of exactly where that is and then you can use that for your night exposures